Yes, my name is Chris is Chris Brumgard, and I work for Oak Ridge National Labs alongside uh, James Simmons, Rick Moore, and uh, SARP. In uh, for Lug 2022, I gave a presentation on Quicksilver, um, a distributed policy engine for Lustre, and for uh, Lug 2023, I wanted to provide a uh, update in terms of the performance characteristics and scale and scalability characteristics that we've observed over the last year. Um, and a uh, pertinent update to this is that Quicksilver has been rebranded and is now Polymore. So as a reminder, the problem that we are trying to solve um, is that in HPC and data centers, File, uh, file systems are becoming increasingly complex uh, to accommodate the needs of the users. Users need faster storage and more storage, but we are, of course, constrained by price. And therefore, most centers have gone to a tiered approach where you have a performance tier and then a capacity tier. However, users are... Uh, terrible at managing the spatial and temporal uh, placement of their data. Um, in fact, we oftentimes run into issues of them not even using LFS Stripe correctly. So, you know, ask, so asking them to, act, to actually manually move their data between tiers is uh, even more problematic. So we have been giving them a unified namespace at ORNL. Um, and this eases their burden. However, it comes at the disadvantage that it tricks them into thinking that their storage is all equally accessible. And therefore, they will forget to migrate and purge the data themselves. In addition to these problems, uh, admins also want an easy and reliable way to implement different policies for different users and groups, as well as getting telemetry and being able to query the state of the file system. So this is where Polymore comes into the picture. Um, it is a distributed, if extensible, and automated policy engine for Luster. We uh, chose the name Pol uh, Polymore as a replacement for Quicksilver. Um, it stands for Policy Engine Made to Order. And we chose and we chose it to sound like a like a polymer because a polymer is a structure that consists of a number of similar units that are bonded together. And then those units have polymorphic properties that can take different shapes um, depending upon the need. So the purposes for polymorph is migration, purging, data collection, and telemetry. Um, so what do we mean by distributed? Well, we're using a agent-oriented microservice approach where each agent is autonomous and purposeful in that it performs just one task. Each agent responds to an event from that comes in from a stream without having to know anything about the other agents involved. And there is no orchestration between the agents. They are completely autonomous and asynchronous to one another. So again, that's where the polymorph comes, comes in at. Um, we tie all of them together with a distributed messaging queue. And we have developed it in such a way to try to maximize both fault tolerance and scalability. So what do we mean by extensible? Well, new agents can be added for extra functionality, right? Since agents are purposeful and unaware of other agents in that they only respond to incoming events, new agents can be added by admins and developers as needed for particular tasks. So what do we mean by automated? Well, there is no, there is minimal to no intervention required by users or admins. 
Um, you define a set of criteria within policy files that you ask to be maintained. And then it is up to that system to then maintain it on and impose it on upon the file system. So here is a uh, diagram that shows how the different agent types and the message queue tie together to enforce policy upon the file system. So in gray, uh, you have a multi-tiered file system. And then you have your scan agents who use file system uh, scan utilities like LFS Find to walk the file system and collect metadata. They then transmit that data along the distributed messaging queue to the policy agents who then take that data and compare it to what is in the policy specification files and then create events that need to occur in order, uh, in order to rectify the system and bring it into, into compliance with that with the given policies. So these messages can then go to, depending upon type, to the to uh, purge agents, migration agents, or or archival agents, whose jobs are to you know to remove files, uh, migrate files, or store files for long term storage, respectively. And then as they perform their actions, uh, the file system is all is altered which then means that the next time you have your file system scan utilities walk, walk the system, they then become aware of these changes and then can then take further uh, uh, initiatives if needed. So last year about this time, I gave a quick demo as to the setup uh, this year, I wanted to give um, what sort of performance characteristics we've seen thus far in the last year. So for this, so for the next set of graphs I'm going to be showing, uh, we used, we performed the test on a test bed consisting of 11 nodes with a 16 core AMD processor and 128 gigs of RAM per, per node. Um, a Lustre file system consisting of uh, six uh, OSS servers and four MDS servers. And this was all tied together using EDR InfiniBand. So we created 100 project directories. And then within that 100 project uh, directories, we just uh, we striped uh, 10, mil 10 million files into them with roughly a 80-20 split as to where those files uh, were on tier. So 80% were on the capacity tier and 20% were on the performance tier. We then randomly time, uh, uh, time stamped the files so that that way some of them would be needing purging and others of them would be needing migration. And for the file sizes we used, um, we followed a bimodal distribution that we have found on some of our past production file systems. And then the setup of Polymore consisted of two policy agents and then uh, three scan agents, three purge agents, and three migration agents. So we, re so we recorded the CPU utilization, the memory utilization, and the uh, number of files processed by the scan agents over a six hour period for those 10 million files. And basically what we found is that in the left graph, um, basically those 10 million files and the file system itself was walked in about one hour. And you can see the number of files scanned cumulatively over time, um, separated by the actual host that they were running on. So we had a one-to-one -one mapping where Basically, one node is running one scan agent. So RAGE 1, RAGE 4, and RAGE 7 are our separate scan agent instances. And you can basically watch uh, as they uh, process the files cum uh, cumulatively and then send them uh, on to the rest of the system. 
And then while we were doing that, we also uh, charted what the CPU utilization was. And uh, what we found was that at no point did the combined utilization ever exceed that of a single core. And this graph is a little bit, I don't want to say deceitful, but false in its appearance. Um, because we because we had so many sampling points, the actual stacked area plot did not come out correctly. Uh, most of the CPU utilization was actually done by LFS find and not the scan agent. Um, normally what we found is LFS find will run for a while, then the scan agent, and then LFS find, and then the scan agent. Um, it's just a, a sampling issue with the graph. So then the next part was we also watched the uh, CPU utilization of the policy agent. And basically what we saw is that much like the scan agent, it took about one hour to run as it was receiving messages. So, it, so they were able to keep up with what, they, with, with what was being fed to them from the uh, scan agent. And basically they um, had very low uh, CPU utilization again. Um, you know, we're, you know, long term, we're talking about 13 to 14% uh, utilization of a single core over the long term. And then I'm not showing memory utilization because with all of these agents, uh, the memory utilization graph is extremely boring because it is entirely flat. Uh, basically, we never really crawled uh, beyond like, 100 kilobytes of actual RAM usage. So then moving on to the purge agents, again, um, we can see that just like with the scan agents and the policy agent, um, all three of them were able to keep up uh, with, what, with uh, what was being fed to them. And that in the course of an hour, each of them was able to purge up to 400,000 uh, files. And then in the right graph, we can see the CPU utilization of them. And again, just like with the, pol just like with the policy agent, uh, because so much of it is just doing the unlinks, you're not, you know, you're not seeing a lot of CPU utilization as much of it is just due to just message deserialization so that's, you know, pretty low in terms of core usage. And then finally, for the uh, migration agent, uh, it's a little bit more, more, in, more, in, more interesting in that it took uh, almost four hours for, e for uh, each of the uh, uh, migration agents to finish. And you can see a cumulative uh, plot as to the number of files that they have migrated. And you can see a little bit of, uh, unlike the other ones, a little bit of uh, jagged lines here. And then this is due to uh, just the different uh, sizes of files that are being migrated. So big, so big files will, of course, result in long stretches of flat periods for each agent. And then if you look over at the right graph, you can also see the actual uh, amount of uh, gigabytes that were actually migrated and you get a much more uh, uh, linear line again. And again, they all did about the same. And each of them, you know, in the course of four hours ended up migrating about one terabyte worth of data. And again, we have a CPU utilization chart uh, on the bottom. And again, we're talking, you know, because you're just basically, you know, copying memory and then sending it right back out again, you're looking at low CPU utilization. Most of it's just tied to just deserializing the incoming messages. So then on the back end, we looked at the impact on the MDS servers and the OSS servers. And for the four MDS servers, you can see that the load over the entire period was relatively low. Uh, we're talking, you know, like maybe uh, up to one to two percent load. 
uh, during the uh, dear, uh, during the initial one hour phase when you're walking the file system. And then after that, um, you know, it drops off once you're no longer having to walk the file system and you've completed most of your unlinks. The only other load there is uh, the migration. And you can basically see that over here on the OSS server graph where you can basically see that, yes, when you're collecting all that metadata, you know, you get much higher load on the OSS servers. And then, you know, once you're done with the unlinks and the scanning, you know, you basically taper down to low CPU utilization when you're just moving the data from one tier to the next. So the next thing I wanted to discuss was what we have seen in terms of actual scale of, uh, in terms of actual scalability. Um, so unlike in the previous uh, uh, test, we deployed from one to 64 agents of each type in powers of two across eight nodes of that same test bed. And then we tested each one in isolation uh, to see how well they scaled. And basically what we saw was looking at the left upper graph, basically as you increase the uh, count of scan agents, you see basic linear, uh, scale, uh, linear scaling. Again, this is a log chart, so this looks you know, exponential, but it is in fact just linear. Um, and then for the purge agents, you, uh, uh, you again see that as you increase the number of purge agents doing the unlinks, you see, you know, almost perfect, uh, you know, scalability, only breaking down a little bit towards the end once you get up to 34 and 64 instant counts. Um, now, the, now, we did identify two scalability issues. Uh, the first one is with the actual policy agents that enforce the policy. And basically what we saw is that after you get past eight to 16 agents, the scalability starts breaking down. And we have traced this back to the messaging queue software that we use. And the fact that when you add a large number of agents and you've pre-populated the queue with a lot of messages, it has a high startup cost. So in the real world, we don't think this will be a problem because we artificially limit the number of uh, messages to something very small. So we think this is just an artifact from our testing where we had basically put in 1 million messages into the queue ahead of time. Um, but then with the migration agents, we also saw that once you go beyond two, um, you know, you don't really see much more performance increase. Uh, and we think that that just has to do with the way that we set up our directory structure for this scaling test. Uh, we basically put a bunch of files all in a single directory. So uh, we think that's what that what's interfering with the migration agents is just that we're, they're getting a lot of contention over luster locks in the same directory. So we think that again, in the real world, you won't see this as frequently and we'll get much better scaling. And we're also looking at adding some uh, methods uh, in order to help ensure that directories are broken up better so that that way you, you won't see this phenomenon. Okay. And then, so that basically uh, the state of where Polymore is, cur is uh, currently uh, we're still doing a lot of work um, in terms of reducing the amount of scan work that needs to happen. We're currently actively productionizing, and we are deploying uh, to the uh, Orion file system that you've heard about so much today. I'm actually going to be working on that um, after this presentation. Uh, we're also working on being able to enforce more complex policies than what we're currently doing. So more than just simple migrations and, pur and purges. And we're looking at adding non-luster agents for handling archival storage and for edge processing. Uh, I would like to thank my uh, fellow developers, uh, Andres George, uh, Katan, 
Rick Moore and uh, James Simmons for uh, helping me prepare this presentation and for uh, helping me conduct the uh, tests whose results uh, you saw. And this concludes my presentation. Um, are there any questions? Okay. There's a question way in the back. Way in the back? On Sarp's side. side of the room has a question. I'm <laughs> impressed. Sarp gets to go up the steps. <laughs> I will. If they have a question, I will. So you're not, you got a really small test bed, so you're not really taking into account network traffic. Are you worried at all when you scale it up that that might be an issue? So in terms of the actual um, messaging queue itself, um, no. Uh, we've tested that sufficiently, and we don't think that that's going to be a problem. Um, the two areas where we are worried about is the is actually walking the file system itself the amount of metadata load that you're going to see and uh the speed at which the migration agents can actually migrate files um so for the first case with the scan agents um what we've seen and you can and you can actually see it in the graphs is that we actually are not uh creating that much metadata load by walking the file system. Uh, so we have confidence that we can actually scale up the number of scan agents sufficiently to walk the file system. And we are also looking at, at uh, adding other scan agents that might utilize uh, scan logs and uh, past uh, results to help lessen the burden on having to do as many full system walks. For the migration portion, um, that is still an open question in that with Lustre, we cannot do third-party transfer. So that means that, you know, the data has to be read, has to travel to the migration agent, and then that migration agent then has to write it back out, All right? So there we can see that there is a concern about being bottlenecked by, by the amount of incoming and outgoing bandwidth to those sets of nodes. And we're looking at ways of uh, addressing that down uh, in the future. In migration agent, how do you process errors? So suppose you have to migrate file, migration failed, and what do you do, report to admin, write to log, retry, so what action? So right now, what we're doing is you will get a error to a log, um, and that file will not be migrated. Um, we will be looking at adding in uh, retry loops for, uh, for that, but uh, currently what will happen is just the file just won't be migrated. But on the next uh, file system walk, it'll be seen again. And then the policy agent will then try to schedule it to have it moved. So basically, you can think of that as being a really long retry loop. Uh, hi there. Uh, next question from uh, Nick Thorne from TAC. Um, where do your what does your scan agents store into? Is that just live in memory, or is there a database that you're writing? Uh, yes. So we have avoided a database as much as possible in our work. Um, our philosophy is basically that the file system is the database. Um, essentially, um, when it when LFS find starts feed starts feeding it uh, files for processing. It uh, it bundles those up into messages that go out on the message queue, and then to the and then to the policy agent. So basically, it is a I get the data, I package it up, and I send it off. If you wanted to now, if you wanted to have like a database recorder, we actually have done some demo work with that, uh, where base where basically you know the policy agent uh, just just sends that out 
and uh, to a recorder agent, and then that recorder agent can record the data into a distributed database. But that's not part of the mainline work, nor is it a requirement of Polymore itself. All right, so Dave Bonney from Lanel. Um, I'm just wondering, as you scale this up, um, Orion's gonna be a pretty big file system. Are you worried about having to implement limits on memory usage on your message queue because you're gonna be waiting on all your agents to process work, so you end up stalling your, your scans? And there, I mean, there's gonna be a whole lot of high water, lower water marks here to, to make this work performantly, right? Yes, um, yes, and in fact, that is actually how we have designed the messaging queue uh, sub, uh, substructure. Uh, we actually keep the actual message limit low. I think we've currently got it set at, at like only 10,000 because we actually want that feedback pressure because we don't want to have a bunch of outdated messages coming into the system, right? Because you don't want to have your scan agent tell your policy agent something and then the policy agent's like, okay, you need to do such and such action. But then by the time the purging or the migration can get to it, you know, that's already like 10 hours out of date, right? We don't want to have that happen. So we've already artificially constrained the size of the queues to keep that from happening, right? So basically back pressure just flows through the system and then the scan agents them themselves will actually end up slowing down. If we have no other questions, let us thank our speaker, Christopher Brumgard.